Winston Churchill School in Lloydminster had an unusual ending to its day today. A maintenance crew was out working when they accidentally struck a gas line, causing a leak and a school-wide evacuation. Uh, one of the crew was digging by the uh, relocatable and, and ruptured a gas line. And uh, at that point, we put into place our emergency procedures and our students uh, were evacuated and all accounted for and mustered at the furthest point away from the building. All the staff and students are safe and have returned home for the evening. I've talked with our facilities manager and uh, he is on site and he's, uh, uh, again, he's uh, liaising with the RCMP as well as the, uh, the gas company is there and the fire department's there and uh, at this point they're, everybody's safe and, and uh, the work is being done to locate the leak, shut the gas off and begin the repair. School is expected to resume normally tomorrow morning. Battleford's RCMP are again seeking the public's assistance in locating Ronald William Piquique, aged 45. Ronald was last seen Saturday, June 25th, leaving a residence on the Red Pheasant First Nation. Ronald indicated at that time that he was going to hitchhike to North Battleford along Highway 4. Police can't confirm if he made it to North Battleford or not. Search and Rescue as well as the RCMP have conducted searches on Red Pheasant First Nation and Highway 4. Police are now asking the public to report anything of interest from these areas. Ronald was last seen wearing a dark blue Oilers jersey and a green Saskatchewan Rough Riders hat. Further to the North Battleford area, Ronald has family ties in Edmonton, Saskatoon and Yellow Quill First Nation. Police continue to investigate as friends and family of Ronald have not heard from him since. Anyone with information about Ronald Piquique or the circumstances involving his disappearance, please contact Battleford's RCMP or Crime Stoppers. The Cold Lake Affordable Housing Society is reaching a crossroads in the completion of a new building in the city. The project was started in 2009 and as Clayton Brown explains, it's still not finished and the society is running out of money. It's been over two years of frustration for Richard Wurgis and the rest of the Cold Lake Affordable Housing Society. Since beginning to build a new complex of affordable housing for Cold Lake residents, they've had nothing but problems. When that craning operation was completed, the site contractor um, put a stop work on the project because he had not been, his trades had not been paid uh, by Barcana. Barcana was hired by the society as the main contractor and since Barcana failed to pay its subcontractors the society has been left in limbo and is running out of money for carrying costs on an empty unfinished building. In terms of the financial resources that we have left we've got about a month left and with the uh, financial commitments that we have and will have in that period of time that will that will be the end of our account. The society has reached out to city council for help but the city is in no position to financially foot the extra costs. We do know uh, that the society doesn't have the money and so we also know that the city of Cold Lake is not prepared to, uh, to also uh, finish the building. But they are working with the province to try and find a solution. We have another follow-up meeting with uh, Alberta Housing and Urban Affairs and, uh, and we'll meet with them end of October and discuss uh, a solution for the, uh, the Cold Lake Affordable Housing uh, building. Around two and a half million dollars is needed to finish the project. In Cold Lake, Clayton Brown, Newcap News. The Green Party has announced a candidate for Lloyd Minster in the Saskatchewan election. This is the first time a Green candidate has ever run in this provincial riding. And as Whitney Stinson reports, leaders say it's a sign the party is gaining momentum in the prairies. But I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Megan Huffham. This has become most of Megan Huffham's evenings, heading door to door and introducing herself to the community and trying to convince them she is their candidate. Saskatchewan is definitely home and I'm very passionate about seeing it grow and have a bright future. During the day she runs an eco-friendly general store and farms cattle outside of town. In a past career she was a health educator with the Lloydminster Health Region. That mix of education and health is still close to her heart. I think having had the teacher strike recently and really taking a look at education, that sure brought it to a forefront in this community. Um, you know even and on another issue as well, door knocking today Looking at that health issue and, do, you know, everybody needs to be insured a family doctor and have access to one. New leader for the Saskatchewan Green says Huffam is the perfect choice for their candidate. She represents the future. Um, she's articulate, bright, young. Um, you know, she, she handles well. She knows the issues. 
And I, I think she's looking toward the future. Like all of our candidates, you know, want to stay in Saskatchewan, want to bring, bring up our families here and, and create a sustainable future. I guess I try and approach everything with an open mind. You know, I'm open to moving forward positively and figuring out the best solution we can. In their platform, the Greens have promised to eliminate poverty through guaranteed livable income, eliminate tuition for Saskatchewan colleges and universities, and create more affordable living projects. Lau says their challenge lies in winning over the rural ridings, as traditionally, Green Party politics have been perceived as very urban. But he's standing behind this platform. Our platform title is One Saskatchewan, and, and that's what we're trying to build. We're trying to bring people together, you know, whether they're, you know, northern, southern, urban, rural, uh, Aboriginal or not. We're, we're trying to say, look, it's One Saskatchewan. We all have to move forward together and, and build those solutions for the future. Have a good night. Thanks a lot. Take care. Huffam hopes to represent that platform here locally through constant communication with her potential constituency. I hope to talk to you in the election. Contact me. Uh, give me a shout, and uh, let's make it a race. Whitney Stinson, Newcap News. During the winter months, keeping your vehicle in top shape will help you deal with nasty weather conditions. Sean Aroshuk spoke with one local business on the importance of getting your vehicle prepared before the snow flies. With the recent above seasonal weather conditions making driving conditions excellent, this may not be top of mind for you. Living in a climate where lots of snow and cold temperatures are common, getting your vehicle ready before winter arrives should be a consideration, regardless if it's new or used. Check your levels, make sure your block heater's working, plug it in, see if it's holding the charge or see if you can hear it going, sometimes you can hear it. Uh, yeah, just make sure your air pressures are up before you go out on the highway. Maintaining the upkeep on your vehicle can be costly, however, Smeal says this may save you in the long run. Don't take it as a, as a cost. It's safety. You can't put a, a price on safety. If you do run into problems on the road, having the necessary supplies will help keep you warm and safe until help arrives. Have a shovel in case. They should have some salt for on the ice. Always carry your cell phone to make sure you got that so if you have to call for help. Warm clothing, candles. Maybe some snacks just to keep you going, water. Both Doug and Matt recommend you put the proper winter tire on your vehicle for optimum traction. If not, you may just roll off the road. Well, winter tires, when you're stopping, has greater stopping power than an all-season does. An all-season, you might have good pickup and go, but your stopping force isn't as great as a winter tire is. Finding the time to have this service done to a vehicle is challenging for many. Smeal says their customers are having to wait to get their vehicles winterized. Great to get a jump, a jump start, which we're seeing now as a lot of people are coming in and booking. We're a week in advance. Sean Aroshik, Newcap News. Well, we previewed it for you last night, and after the break, we'll see how local blues fans got their fix at the Johnny Winter concert last night. <laughs> 